the good news of Yeshua the Messiah as reported by Yochanan. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing made had been. In him was life. The life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not suppressed it. There was a man sent from God whose name was Yochanan. He came to be a testimony, to bear witness concerning the light, so that through him everyone might be, everyone <clears throat> might put his trust in God and be faithful to him. He himself was not the light. No, he came to bear witness concerning the light. This was the true light, which gives light to everyone entering the world. He was in the world. The world came to be through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own homeland. Yet his own people did not receive him. But to as many as did receive him, to those who put their trust in his person and power, he gave the right to become children of God. Not because of bloodline, physical impulse, or human intention, but because of God. The word became a human being and lived with us. And we saw his shikna, the shikna of the Father, only Son, full of grace and truth. Yukonan's witness concerning him when he cried out, This man is the man I was talking about when I said, The one coming after me has come to rank ahead of me because he exists before me. We have all received from his fullness, yes, grace upon grace. For the Tanakh was given through Moshi, grace and truth came through Yeshua, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, but the only and unique Son, who is identical with God and is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Here in Yochanan's testimony. When the Judeans sent the Kohen and the Leviim from Yerushalayim to ask him, Who are you? He was very straightforward and stated clearly, I am not the Messiah. Then who are you? They asked him. Are you Eliyahu? No, I am not, he said. Are you the prophet, the one we're expecting? No, he replied. So they said to him, who are you? So that we can give an answer to the people who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? He answered the word of Yeshayahu the prophet, I am the voice of someone crying out, in the desert make way, make the way of Adonai straight. Some of those who had been sent were Prushim. They asked him, if you are neither the Messiah nor Eliyahu nor the prophet, then why are you immersing people? To them, Yukonim replied, I am immersing people in water, but among you is standing someone whom you don't know. He is the one coming after me. I'm not good enough even to untie his sandal. All this took place in Biet Anaya, east of the Yarden, where Yochanan was immersing. The next day, Yochanan saw Yeshua coming toward him and said, Look, God's lamb, the one who is taking away the sin of the world. This is the man I was talking about when I said, After me is coming someone who, ha who has come to rank above me because he existed before me. I myself did not know who he was, but the reason I came immersing with water was so that I might, so that he might be made known to Israel. When Yochanan gave his testimony, I saw the Spirit coming down from heaven like a dove and remaining on him. I myself did not know who he was, but the one who sent me to immerse in water said to me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining, this is the one who immerses in the Ruach HaKodesh. And I have seen and bore witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, Yochanan was again standing with two of his Talmudim. On seeing Yeshua walking by, he said, Look, God's Lamb! His two, heard, his two Talmudim heard him speaking, and they followed Yeshua. Yeshua turned and saw them following him, and he asked them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying. 
and remained with him the rest of the day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon, one of the two who had heard Yochanan and had followed Yeshua was Andrew, the brother, the brother of Shimon Kepha. The first thing he did was to find his brother Shimon and tell him, We found the Mashiach! The words means one who has been anointed. He took him to Yeshua. Looking at him, Yeshua said, You are Shimon bar Yochanan. You will be known as Kepha. The name means rock. The next day, having decided to leave for the Gilal, Yeshua found Philip and said, Follow me. Philip was from Beth Zirda, the town where Andrew and Kepha lived. Philip found Netanel and told him, We found the one who Moshe, Moshe wrote about in the Torah, also the prophets. It's Yeshua ben Yosef from Nazareth. Netanel answered him, Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Come and see. Philip said to him, Yeshua saw Nathanael coming down, coming toward him, remarked about him, here is a true son of Israel, nothing false in him. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Yeshua answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael said, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Yeshua answered him, you believe all this? Just because I told you I saw you under the victory, you will see great thing, greater things than that. Then he said to him, Yes, indeed, I tell you that you will see heaven opened and the angels of God going up and coming down on the Son of Man. On Tuesday, there was a wedding at Cana in the Gilau. The mother of Yeshua was there. Yeshua, too, was invited to the wedding along with his Talmudim. The wine ran out. And Yeshua's mother said to him, They have no more wine. Yeshua replied, Mother, why should that concern me or you? My time hasn't yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now six stone water jars were standing there for the Jewish ceremonial washings, each of them capacity of 20 or 30 gallons. Yeshua told them, Fill the jars with water. They filled them to the brim. He said, Now draw some out and take it to the man in charge of the banquet. And they took it. The man in charge tasted the water. It had been turned into wine. He did not know where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. So he called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone else serves the good wine first and the poor wine after the people have drunk freely. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of Yeshua's miraculous signs. He did at Canaan in the Gilau. He manifested his glory and his Talmudim came to trust in him. Afterward, he and his mothers and brothers and his Talmudim went down to Kafarnakum and stayed there a few days. It was, among, it was almost time for the festival of Pesach in Yehuda, so Yeshua went up to Jerusalem. In the temple grounds, he found those who were selling cattle, sheep, pigeons, and other, others who were sitting at tables exchanging money. He made a whip from cords and drove them all out of the temple grounds, and sheep and cattle as well. He knocked over the money changer tables, scattering their coins. And to the pigeon sellers, he said, Get these things out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? His Talmudim later recalled that the Tanakh says, Zeal for your house will devour me. So the Judeans confronted him by asking, What miraculous sign can you show us to prove that you are right to do this? And Shu answered them, Destroy this temple. In three days, I'll raise it up again. The Judeans said, It took 40 years to build this temple. You're going to raise it again in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his Talmudim remembered that he had said this, and they trusted in the Tanakh and in what Yeshua had said. Now, while Yeshua was in Jerusalem at the Pesach festival, there were many people who believed in his name when they saw the miracles he performed. But he did not commit himself to them, for he knew what people are like, that is, he didn't need anyone to inform him about a person because he knew what was in a person's heart. There was a man among the Prushim named Nicodem. He was a ruler of the Judeans. This man came to Yeshua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know it is from God that you have come as a teacher, for no one can do these miraculous, these miracles you perform unless God is with you. Yes, indeed, Yeshua answered him. I tell you that unless a person is born again from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a grown man be born? 
Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? Yeshua answered, Yes, indeed, I tell you that unless a person is born from water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born from the flesh and what is born from the Spirit is spirit. Stop being amazed at me telling you that you must be born again from above. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear its sound. But you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. That's how it is with everyone who has been born from the Spirit. Nicodem replied, How can this happen? Yeshua answered him, You hold the office of teacher of Israel and you don't know this? Yes, indeed, I tell you that what we speak about we know and what we give evidence of we have seen. But you people don't accept our evidence. If you people don't believe me when I tell you about the things of the world, how will you believe me when I tell you about the things of heaven? Now, when I was gone up into heaven... There is only one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and unique Son, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life instead of being utterly destroyed. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but rather so that the world through him, the world might be saved. Those who trust in him are not judged. Those who do not trust have been judged already in that they have not trusted in the one who is God's only and unique son. Now this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, but people have loved the darkness rather than the light. Why? Because their actions are wicked. For everyone who does evil things hates the light and avoids it so that his actions won't be exposed. But everyone who does what is true to the light so that all may see that his actions are accomplished through God. After this, Yeshua and his Talmudim went out to the countryside of Yehuda, where he stayed a while with them and immersed people. Yochanan, too, was immersing at Enayaya near Shalem, because there was plenty of water there, and people kept coming to be immersed. This was before Yochanan's imprisonment. A discussion arose between some of Yochanan's Talmudim and a Judean about ceremonial washing. And they came to Yukon and said to him, Rabbi, you know that the man who is with you on the other side of the garden, the one who you spoke about, well, here he is, immersing, and everyone's going to him. Yukon answered, No one can receive anything unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves can confirm, I did not say I was the Messiah, but that I have been sent ahead of him. The bridegroom is the one who has the bride, but the bridegroom's friend, who stands and listens to him, is overjoyed at the sound of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine is now complete. He must become more important while I become less important. He who comes from above is above all. He who is from the earth is from the earth and talks about the earthly point of view. He who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies about what he actually seen and heard. Yet no one accepts what he says. Whoever does what he said, whoever does what he says puts his seal on the fact that God is true, because the one whom God sent speaks God's words. For God does not give him a spirit of limited degree, for the Father loves the Son and has put everything in his hands. Whoever trusts in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see the life, but remains subject to God's wrath.